Hello, Steve White, Steve White, 39. Well, we've got some good news about uh, Gone with the Wind. It has been returned to um, HBO Max. Uh, it's been two weeks, and um, honestly, I wasn't sure it was going to come back. I thought when they were saying that they were going to put it back with um, a disclaimer and um, a conversation about the film, I thought they were just sort of saying that to um, pacify the fans who were not happy, um, the film historians who were not happy, the many people who were not happy about the film being removed. Um, but they were telling the truth, and within two weeks, which is a lot quicker than I thought, um, it's back. Now, it has a four and a half or four minute and 26 second segment um, which plays before the film, uh, which is um, basically a talk from a film historian, um, Jacqueline Stewart, uh, who hosts the Turner Classics mo Classic Movies, who I haven't actually seen. I haven't seen Turner Classic Movies for a long time. I used to love the channel um, when I had Foxtel, which is the Australian, one of the Australian um, cable channels, which I had like years ago. Um, loved it. Um, our sort of more prominent Australian host of the channel um, has passed away so I don't know who is hosting it here and I didn't know who was hosting it in America so it looks like they've gotten someone who knows what they're talking about someone who's quality to do it um, I'm not quite sure about their attitude though um, they were talking about it um, and um, I don't know if I should read the article or just read from my notes um, they basically say, well, they, they talk about how the film has been um, controversial from the start. Um, black audiences were concerned about how the characters would be portrayed, the black characters. Um, I felt like they really tried to um, make these characters endearing and treat them with respect, more so than the characters probably would have been treated with in the actual times. And I think that's been taken the wrong way. That's been taken, I think, as hiding or um, glamorising um, the reality of slavery. But I think they just wanted these characters to have a better life, I think, than their real-life counterparts would have. I don't think it's as negative as it's being seen now, um, 80 years later. I don't think... I think they had the best intentions and they did the best they could. Now, um, the, um, Ms. Stewart says that the film itself can be uncomfortable to watch, and I did watch it a few weeks ago um, after it was cancelled, and I did um, have a couple of moments, um, mo you, pretty much when um, I think both Scarlett and Rhett refer to the, um, uh, the, the slaves, which you think of as servants because that's, they're treated like members of the family and um, they're working for them, which eventually they are, but um, at the beginning they're not. Um, and they refer to them as darkies, and I'm like, why did they use, why couldn't they just call them people or them? Why did they have to use, why did they ever think that term would, uh, why, how did they think that term wouldn't, if it wasn't bad at the time, it wouldn't seem bad later on, or out, like, why didn't they think if this was a film for the ages, why didn't they think in those terms a bit more? So a couple of little things that are disappointing. The, the, the basic complaint with the film is that it glamorises um, the South and it doesn't acknowledge slavery and makes it sort of seem like these people were just treated like family, which I've heard in some cases towards the end of the slave era that um, there were people that ran their farms like that and they didn't abuse the slaves, but for the most part, they were so um the main criticism is that they don't sort of represent this but who would want them to who would want to see that i mean i've seen roots and um amistad and a lot of a few films that um depict slavery and it's traumatizing and exhausting and you can't have a beautiful romantic film um a romantic epic like that with ugly realities like that in it. Um, so I think they kind of have a right artistically to create a fantasy, as long as they are clear that it is a fantasy. And it already had its own disclaimer where it says that it is basically a fantasy, that it's something you can only find in this place, this this world that they're depicting can only be found in books, that it's a, it's a dream remembered. 
and a civilization, civilization gone with the wind. So I think they made it pretty clear in the original film that it wasn't supposed to be, it wasn't a documentary, it wasn't supposed to be taken as um, a historical epic where it's supposed to be representing the time exactly. It was a, a romantic fantasy, a, a, you get the point. So I don't need to defend the film, I really should just be talking about this um, thing. And they've also included a one hour panel, which was done during the Turner Classic Movies Film um, Festival in April 2019 where they talk about the history of the film and the um, problematic nature of the film now. And like I said, I wish they'd done a few things differently so the film would have um, a longer life because, um, like, even though I love the film and everything, I, I still had a moment or two where I was uncomfortable watching it, but um, just, like, a couple of moments. The rest of the time, you just accept... I, I find as an audience member, you just accept what it is and you enjoy it. You don't sort of expected to be something that it's not and I don't see why anyone would be upset or outraged that the film isn't something different from what it's supposed to be like oh this doesn't do what I want it to so I'm upset uh, that sort of mentality drives me a bit mad um so what else did they say um she's saying how because the in in, a, in oh god I still don't know the NAACP is that it um I can never get the the the, the initials right, but um, they were involved in the film, they asked for changes, um, so they did make an effort at the time to um, treat the, the characters, the black characters and the actors with respect. Now unfortunately the film was made during segre segregated times and the, the actors weren't able to, I mean Clark Gable de desegregated the set so the actors could, they didn't have to use different water fountains and ridiculous things like that. Um, he basically said he would quit if they didn't do that, and they did. But he wasn't able to get them, the black actors, into the premiere or the Oscars. Um, Hattie McDaniel, who won the Oscar, she was brought she was brought in just a few minutes before the ceremony. She wasn't able to sit with the other actors. And things like this are horrible, but they're nothing to do with the film. They, this is just the times that the film was made in and how... America was at the time, and to hold that against the film 80 years later is really unfair, um, because it's nothing to do with the story or the subject or the themes or um, anything. It's just how things were then, and it's horrible and it's ugly, but it's just not something you need to hold against the film. I, d I just don't see any sense in doing that. Um, now she was talking about how um, basically, basically what I said before, that the, the people, the black people in the film are basically shown, um, well she said, as notable, as servants notable for their devotion to their white masters or for their ineptitude, um, Stuart says, Stuart says, she continues the film's treatment of the world through a lens of nostalgia denies the horrors of slavery as well as its legacies of racial inequality. So, I mean, I kind of get that. I don't disagree. Um, I just think these are the kind of things that you understand when you watch the film. You don't need someone, well, I don't need someone to sit for four minutes and tell me about it. Um, and I don't think most audience do. But I guess some do, so I guess it has to be there for the people who either would deny this truth or be unaware of it. Now, I don't deny that truth and I'm not unaware of it, so I don't need a disclaimer. But I guess I guess it can't hurt. As long as you can skip it, because I don't have to watch, sit through four minutes of them talking every time I would watch the film um, on a streaming service. I'm hoping you don't have to actually sit through it every time because that would get really tiresome. It's bad enough having to sit through the overture and um, the, 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 um, the disclaimer that already is at the front of the film. Um, although I assume that's much nicer than their one. <laughs> um, yeah, and she basically says, although watching the film can be um, uncomfortable, even painful, which I think is a bit of a stretch, it's definitely uncomfortable in a few moments, it's still important that these classic Hollywood films are available to us in their original form for viewing and discussion. And, um, I'm really hungry.
probably. I don't know if you heard that, but my stomach is growling. Um, yeah, they just go over in the article just about how it was pulled after um, John Ridley, the screenwriter of 12 Years a Slave, um, urged Warner to remove the film. Um, I mean, I understand why some um, black people are offended by the film, but I think they're just... I don't think it's just warrant. I just don't think it's warranted. Um, and I just think... I don't even want to get into that subject because it's very difficult because with the whole Black Lives Matters, um, a lot of people are um, trying to reduce the movement, reduce the problems and try and make it seem less important. And I don't want to do that by criticising their um, view of the film. So I'm just going to go straight to the fact that then at the end of it, they just talk about how the movie won eight competitive Oscars, including Best Picture, Best, Act Best Actress for Vivian Lee, Best Director for Victor Fleming, and Best Supporting Actress for McDaniel. And the American Film Institute ranks Gone with the Wind, which was one of the first, very first movies to air on Turner Classic Movies in 1994, 1994 as the number four best American movie of all time after Citizen Kane, Casablanca and The Godfather. I think it's number one and it is the biggest, yeah, adjusting for inflation, Gone with the Wind remains the highest grossing film at the box office ever. And one of the things I worried about was that if they put disclaimers on it and pull it from things, um, will it get the same amount of rotation and views and will it be able to maintain its status if these other films are able to be viewed regularly without any um, controversy or disclaimers and so forth. Um, will it hurt the long-term box office? Because I greatly enjoyed the 60th anniversary of the film. I saw it at a um, at a retro theatre that actually opened two, three years before the film. So the original film was shown in it and it's in its original state. And it was amazing um, going in and watching it in this classic theatre and feeling like you're going back in time. Um, and I've enjoyed seeing the film again on its other anniversaries, its 70th and 80th anniversaries, and I really want it to have a 90th anniversary and a 100th anniversary where it gets treated with respect and gets um, a lot of attention and a lot of love, and I don't want that to be derailed by um, a lot of revisionism and things that I think you just can't judge a 1939 film by 2019, 2020 standards. Um, it doesn't serve any purpose. So I'm just glad it's back. Uh, I'm glad the disclaimer doesn't seem to be too um, judgmental, too harsh. It seems to be fairly simple. I don't think any of it needed to be stated, but I don't think it hurts. Um, I'm just going to leave it there. I'm just glad it's back, and I hope it doesn't go away. <laughs> Thanks, bye.